Hi everyone. This morning what I'm going to be doing is a staff replacement job on the Illinois Bun Special Project. So here I've got my uh, balance wheel, no hairspring, no roller, the old staff in it, ready to be knocked out. I have a staking tool. I have the centering punch for that staking tool. I have a K&D staff removal tool. I have a little brass hammer for use with the staking set. In the background, you can see the rest of the staking kit with the associated punches and stumps. And I'll be talking later about which punches and how we're going to be selecting them uh, for inserting the new staff. I've got a micrometer for taking measurements of my new staff to make sure that the supply house has sent me the correct staff code. And I've got the new staff in this envelope. I do not think that the existing staff in the watch is the correct staff. So I'm going to be taking measurements between the staff code as described in a book of American pocket watch balance staffs and the actual staff they've sent me. So I'm really more concerned here uh, whether the supply house has sent me the correct staff since I know for certain what is the correct staff code for this watch. Okay. So I'm going to begin by knocking out the old staff. And for this, I have to first select a hole in the staking table uh, that will accommodate the old staff, but will allow that staff to pass through so it can be collected and doesn't get jammed in the table, okay? So I've selected a hole here in the staking table where the entire hub fits in, that is the balance arms sit flush against the table. And the reason for this is that the, the arms, when you're knocking out a staff, must be supported or else the balance will be, will be uh, bent or broken. So the arms must be supported from below. However, um, the staff must have a little side play in the hole in order for the hub to fall, uh, in order for the whole staff, the old staff to pass through the table and be collected and not get jammed up. So if I go one side down, the hub does not fit in the hole, and the arms do not rest flat against the table and won't be supported when I'm knocking at the staff. So that hole won't do. We're going one up where the hub will fit in completely. Now, um, um, I have already centered up this hole using my centering punch. So I can put that off to the side. And I'm going to proceed with removing the old staff. It should be said at this point that there are multiple ways to remove a staff. Perhaps the best way is to mount the balance in the lathe and cut off the hub uh, after annealing it. Uh, so I've tried this without annealing it. I think, you know, some people can do it without annealing it if you use a tungsten carbide graver. But with my standard hardened steel graver, I blunted it very quickly. So for now, I'm just sticking with the tried and true method of knocking out the staff. But cutting the hob off and the lathe is definitely something I would like to transition to at a future point. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about the staff remover. Uh, so this staff remover has a hole on the underside and a flat portion. So again, this is to support the arms as close to the balance hub as possible. We want to provide maximum support to the balance, both from below and from above to make sure that when we break that staff rivet on the old staff that we're not going to be either stretching out the hole or distorting the balance arms. And this tool actually does a very good job of this. So again, I've selected the hole on the bottom that is closest to the hub, right, is maximally supporting the arms. And this little hole in the candy staff remover uh, gets very, very close to the hub of the balance wheel. Uh, the staff remover comes with this, uh, with this punch. The punch is drilled through to accommodate a pivot. Uh, and this fits into the staff remover and will drive out your staff. And there's a little window in the tool to make sure that your uh, punch is set up properly on the staff before you go whacking anything. So we've got to mount the, uh, we've got to mount the remover in the tool. And for that purpose, we're going to just fit the hole of the staff remover over, over the staff. I then insert the punch and make sure that it is actually on the staff before I tighten down the tool. 
So uh, I'm gonna use my loop for this purpose if I can find the thing. There we go. I'm just using light finger pressure on the punch and I'm looking in the little, little window to make sure, yes, that my punch is on top on top of the staff with the pivot going in the hole of the punch. Um, so now what I'm going to do is tighten the tool. And on the top side, this tightens against the, uh, the staking tool. And the flat bottom side is going to uh, press down on the balance arms so that they will be supported from above and below as close to the center of the balance as possible, as close to the hub as possible. So this screws up against the staking tool. And then this arm can be used to finally tighten it down. So I'm using finger tight there. Then I can lever this to make sure that it's fully tightened against the balance. So there we go. Now my balance wheel is sandwiched between the, um, the staff removal tool and the staking table. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is come in and, um, and knock out the staff. Again, just take a little peek. Make sure that punch is in the right place. As it happens, it's not. So let's loosen it and try that again. Okay, I'm satisfied. Tool is fully tightened down, so the balance is supported. Now I'm going to come in with my light brass hammer, and I'm going to tap the punch, and the punch is going to drive out the old staff, breaking the rivet that holds the staff in the balance. This should not take too much force, but you can feel once the rivet is broken. You'll feel, you know, you may get one, um, one tap of initially high resistance, you tap it again, and you can feel the rivet collapse and the staff fall out of the balance. So let's do that now. There we go. So our staff has fallen through the table, I'll show you. It's actually bounced out, and there's the old staff on the table there. I can now retract the punch and remove the tool as before. Nice and clean. I really, I like this tool. It does actually quite a clean job. So there we go. There's our balance. Ready for a closer inspection. I'm a little worried about the condition of this um, this hub. Uh, maybe it's okay. Maybe that, that was an optical illusion. Okay. So, <laughs> so there's our balance wheel. And we can put our staff remover away. That's uh, that's its job, job done. I really recommend you get one of these things. They're, they're quite expensive these days, but, um, but well worth it. So here I'm pre-cleaning the old balance in a, a little jar of lighter fluid with a artist paintbrush. Key thing here is I just want to make sure I've got all any dirt like corrosion out of the balance hub. So that way when I secure the new staff, there's nothing caught between the staff and the wheel. Obviously this is going to pass through the cleaning machine later, so I don't need to be obsessive. But um, I just want to get any loose crud off there. And this will allow for a better visual inspection of the condition of the hub before I insert the new staff. Now I'm just going to make a close visual inspection of the balance, paying particularly close attention to the condition of the balance hub, the hole that passes through the balance arms to which the new staff is going to be riveted. If the balance has not been adequately supported in the past when knocking out uh, riveted staffs, you may find that the hole is stretched or distorted, and this may be a sign that it's going to be difficult to secure the new staff uh, to the hub. In this case, I think this is okay. This the hole is quite round, maybe a little, maybe a little bit stretched, but I think we should be okay. You can also use this point to take note of any other weird aspects of the balance. Here, I'm noting that the meantime screws. Uh, screws that are used to adjust the average rate of timekeeping and are typically at the ends of the balance arms are, uh, <laughs> are really uneven. One has been really screwed out. So uh, this may be a 
I think what this is, is because before someone inserted a staff with a chunk out of it, as I showed you guys in one of my previous videos, what they did was an attempt in an attempt to poise the balance, screw out one of the meantime screws to compensate for that, which is just really, uh, really uh, not great watchmaking. But uh, there you go. That's uh, these are the practices of another time, I suppose. I mean, our own time, but. These days, those people don't don't usually charge money. I mean, I don't know. Whatever. Okay, so that's one weird thing about the balance we're going to have to do. Okay, so now I'm turning my attention to my new staff, an Illinois 16S 1506. And what I want to do is before I insert the staff into the balance wheel, I want to make absolutely sure that I've got the right staff. Now, I don't have a lot of confidence in the previous watchmaker, and I don't think I'm going to be measuring the old staff against the new staff. Instead, what I want to do is use this staff interchangeability list, which I bought on eBay maybe a year ago, and make sure that the staff that the supplies house has sent me is actually an Illinois 16S 1506. I have high confidence that that's the right code, uh, the, right, the right staff code for this fun special, to the best of my knowledge, at least so far as... Uh, pocket watch database would have me believe the bun special only ever used two staffs one single roller and one double roller the 1506 so uh here in the interchangeability interchangeability list i can find the appropriate staff so uh here we go illinois oh i lost it there we go illinois 16s 1506 and it has a number of different measurements which correspond to various dimensions of the balance staff as illustrated here. It's got columns one, two, three, four, five. Those are marked here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a watchmaker's micrometer, a bench micrometer, to take measurements of the staff that they've sent me and make sure that I do in fact have an Illinois 1506 staff. One twenty six, very nice. Okay, let's come in for another edition of what's our objective. So here I've drawn a kind of uh, not too elegant drawing of a balance staff uh, in a balance hole. So I've drawn the balance staff here, and I've drawn some balance arms. So uh, this part of the staff here is the balance shoulder. This should pass through the hole. Uh, in the balance wheel, hopefully snugly, although this isn't always guaranteed. On the top of the balance shoulder is what's called a riveting countersink. This is a, a slight undercutting of the balance shoulder so that you have a little lip here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come in with a domed punch, with our domed punch, and when we exert downward pressure, we're going to spread out this riveting countersink. And we're going to try to make a little lip over the edge of the balance hole. So we want this riveting countersink to be spread out against the hole and hopefully, although it can be difficult if your hole is somewhat enlarged, um, peen, that is spread, this uh, riveting countersink slightly, slightly over the edge of the balance hole. Uh, so that's our objective. Then, then what we're going to do is come in with a flat punch and flatten down this rivet against the balance arms and that will make sure that when the hairspring collet goes on and that grips the hairspring shoulder here that this can get all the way down to the level of the balance arms okay so we want to rivet that once it's done is level with the balance arms okay that's a very short version of what's our objective okay i'm now satisfied that i have the correct staff and what i'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be selecting a hole in the roller table, which I'm going to insert the staff in, balance shoulder up, to uh, to drive on the uh, the balance and then uh, rivet it to the staff. So I'm going to start by taking the uh, staff between my tweezers, holding on to the hairspring shoulder, and I'm going to carefully insert it into holes in the staking table. And what I want 
is a hole, the, the smallest hole into which the roller um, post will fit and the roller seat will actually sit on the table such that it does not bind against the roller post. So I'm going down, down, down until I find one in which the, the staff will no longer sit flat against the staking table on the roller table. Too big. And the point here is to adequately support the staff. So that's too small. Adequately support the staff, but not have the staff bind in the staking table. So there we go. That's our correct hole. Now what I'm going to do is center up that hole using centering punch. There we go. And lock the staking table. Good. Okay. So that's it for the centering punch. It can go away. So now I can insert my staff into the staking table. The next step is to select an appropriate set of punches to use to rivet this staff to the balance wheel. For this, I need three punches, at least two, but probably three. One, I need a punch to push the balance wheel onto the staff. So ideally, your balance wheel should fit snugly onto the balance shoulder and you'll need a flat punch to drive it down onto the balance seat. That's one punch. We may not actually need this because in practice, after many staff changes, the holes may be slightly enlarged. We may not actually need that. So that's one. The second one we need is we need a punch that's going to fit into the riveting shoulder and that we're gonna to use to peen the rivet. We're gonna use it to make the rivet that will hold the staff against the balance wheel. For this, we want a domed punch, such as this, a domed um, hollow center punch, such as this, that will fit snugly over the hairspring shoulder, but not bind against it. We want the smallest domed punch that will not bind against the hairspring shoulder. So I'm gonna to try to find one of those. And I want a similar flat punch. So I've got a bigger flat punch that will fit over the balance shoulder to drive the balance wheel on, but I also need a smaller flat hollow punch that at the very end, we're gonna to use to finish the rivet. So we're gonna pin the metal over the balance wheel. And at the very end, we're gonna come in with a flat punch and just push that down into a nice clean uh, rivet. So for that purpose, again, I'm gonna use a flat hollow punch that is the smallest I can get that will fit over the hairspring shoulder. Okay, so I'm gonna go about selecting those punches now. Okay, I'm now ready to begin uh, riveting the staff to the wheel. And for that, I'm gonna be using two punches, as I mentioned before, both of which, a dome punch and a flat punch, both of which fit closely against the hairspring shoulder. And I just wanna reiterate at this point why it's important that they fit so close to the shoulder. Very simply, we do not want these punches to make direct contact with the balance wheel. We only want these punches to touch the balance staff, right? First to push out, to peen the riveting shoulder, and then to very lightly with the flat punch, flatten that rivet down against, uh, against the uh, balance wheel, okay? So at no point do we want either of these to come in contact with the balance wheel because then if you're hammering, you will mark or mar or damage the balance wheel. So that's why it's essential that these punches fit closely over the hairspring shoulder, but not over the balance shoulder, right? At which point they would touch the balance wheel. Okay, so that's why we choose these punches so carefully. So I'm gonna begin by placing my balance wheel over the new staff. Good. So that looks good. And now I'm gonna use my larger hollow flat punch, which fits over the balance shoulder, just with finger pressure to drive the balance 
into place on its seat. Ideally, you want this to take a little finger pressure. In this case, I think the hole is enlarged very slightly, so we don't actually need any finger pressure here. That's securely on its seat, and I can just make sure of that by inspecting it visually with loop. Yep, okay, that looks fine. Now I'm gonna start riveting with my domed hollow punch. Just wanna double check that it's making absolutely zero contact with the balance wheel. Yep, okay. So the way I'm gonna go about this is I'm going to give a light tap, then I am going to lift off the punch and turn. I turn by about 12 and a half degrees, so eight turns for one 360 degree rotation. And that makes sure that if there's any unevenness in the punch or in the riveting shoulder, that this isn't going to be concentrated all in one location. I want the riveting shoulder to be riveted evenly all the way, all the way around the uh, balance wheel hole. Okay, so let's begin. So I can hold the punch between my thumb and forefinger. Using my brass hammer. So as you rivet, uh, you should be spreading out the riveting shoulder of the staff against the balance wheel. And this is going to hold the balance wheel in firm contact with the staff. So I check often. I often don't even get a full way around before I'm checking whether the riveting shoulder is secure against the, uh, the balance wheel. And here's a good way to, to uh, check this that is in Henry Freed's Watch Repairs Manual. Bear in mind at this point that the... Uh, the punch, the riveting punch, is not uh, in direct contact with the balance wheel. The riveting punch is touching the staff, which is riveted to the balance wheel. So that means that if the rivet is secure, then I should be able to hold down firmly on the punch, which is making contact with the uh, staff, and the balance should be securely in place, right? So I can come in with tweezers and just ensure that this thing is not turning freely. Indeed, in this case, it not, it's not. It takes quite a bit of force for me to move, which I'm not going to exert here, but um, you can see that the balance doesn't want to turn easily. And what that suggests to me is that, in fact, our rivet is now secure. Okay? And if you take a close inspection, you should be able to see this. You should be able to see the riveting shoulder spread out, get peened out over the hole in the balance wheel. Then finally, what we're going to do to finish off the rivet and make sure that once we ins once we put on the hairspring, the hairspring collet can get down all the way to the balance arms, is we're going to spread out this rivet. We're just going to flatten it against the, um, not pardon me, not spread out this rivet, just flatten this rivet against the balance hole, against the balance arms. So for that reason, I'm coming in with my tight fitting flat punch. And you should be able to see that this flat punch does not quite touch the arms of the balance wheel because the that little bit of the rivet that has been spread up above the level of the uh, balance hole and over the balance arms is making a tiny little gap between this flat face punch and the balance arms. Then you're going to come in and tap super, 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 super lightly just to finish off that rivet, to flatten it down against the balance arm. So I'm turning the punch, just tip, 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 tip. Then I can come in and check that my rivet is nice and clean and flat against the uh, balance arms. And you can turn the balance a little bit, get a look from different angles. Okay, so I'm bringing you guys in for a view of the finished rivet. Recall that I said earlier that our objective was to spread the riveting countersink over the edge of the balance hole. And so this is what I've attempted to do here. Although as I was working on this, um, on this riveting job, it became more and more clear to me that this hole was kind of badly distorted. 
and to get a big lip over the edge of the hole would have required more peening than I was prepared to do. You don't want to peen the uh, rivet too much because you'll actually work harden the um, you'll work harden the rivet and make it brittle. So uh, I have stretched out the rivet as much as I can and then flattened it down. The key point being that the uh, balance is secure uh, to the rivet as I showed earlier. So here you can see where some smart guy has damaged the hole in the past um, by perhaps inserting a staff kind of carelessly. You can see this indentation here. So uh, I came in with my domed punch. I pushed out the riveting countersink. And then you can see um, where I have come in with my flat punch just to finish that rivet um, against the top of the balance hole. So I think I've got a tiny lip over the edge of the balance hole. But again, the key thing here is that the uh, rivet is secure, and I believe that it is. So, um, so that's my that's my finished rivet. And again, if you guys have comments on this, should I have peened more? I'm kind of on the fence about that, but um, it seems to be secure, so um, I think this will work. Finally, once you've done your restaffing, you can check your balance and shake <clears throat> in the uh, in the movement. So. I'm going to take my balance, doesn't have the roller, doesn't have the hairspring. I still have to uh, replace the uh, impulse jewel in the roller. Uh, but I'm just going to place my balance in the watch, secure the balance cock, and make sure that the balance can rotate freely and has adequate end shake. Okay, okay so now I'm showing you that the balance can spin freely in the, in the, um, in the movement. And it certainly has sufficient end shake. I can also just check if it's too much. I'll grab the arm close to the staff. I can feel a tiny bit of end shake, but uh, totally within normal range. So that's great. Uh, if I blow the balance with an air blower, you can see it spins freely. So our restaffing job appears to be a success. You can also, we can also use this opportunity to make one more check, which is to observe how the balance moves when I look at it from the side. And uh, just check whether or not we're going to have to um, true the balance. Yes. So you can see this balance is wobbling around a little bit. So the next, next task will be getting out the balance truing caliper and... Um, flattening out the balance wheel. Uh, however, it, it bears mentioning that um, this is not a sufficient level of checking once you've restaffed. So in particular, what you want to do is you want to check your, um, your divisions, right? So the division is the lateral distance, and pardon me, the horizontal distance between each of the components of the escapement and the balance. So for example, um, we want our um, hairspring to sit clear of the balance arms. We want our regulator pins to um, be at the same level as the hairspring. We do not want our uh, regulator arms to touch the balance arms. We do not want the balance to come in contact with the pallet bridge. Right? So these are the divisions, the horizontal divisions between the components of the escapement and balance wheel. And I have not done enough to adequately check this now. So in particular, what I need to do now is complete my repair of the, um, of the roller jewel, replace that in the roller, put the roller back on the staff, and mount the hairspring on the staff. Then with the balance assembly complete, what I can do is come back and uh, insert the pallet fork and the pallet bridge and make a complete check of not only the escape, the uh, divisions of the escapement and balance wheel, but also the proper functioning of the, the proper interaction between both the pallet fork and the balance staff and the, um, and the uh, pallet fork and the escape wheel. Uh, and as a component part of that, we can take a much closer inspection of the hairspring to make sure it's sitting flat and that it is concentric with the balance axis. Um, and those, that's generally, uh, those are generally two steps I save for 
right before final cleaning. So our restaffing job is a success so far. Whether it's an absolute success depends on how the watch um, checks out in those final checks before cleaning. So for the moment, for the restaffing itself, let's call this a qualified success. Uh, so uh, the next video will be dealing with replacing the impulse jewel. For now, you can see the balance springs, uh, swings freely, and, um, and I'm going to call this restaffing job complete. Okay, thank you all so much for watching. As always, if you have constructive feedback or criticism, please leave it in the comments below. Um, otherwise, I will be catching you guys in the next day or two. Thanks very much. Bye.